many times. Um, so I'm just going to make a video instead of trying to text this long book on, you know, how to fill your nails at home, whether you have acrylic on or just gel polish. Um, we're going to keep it easy. So you're just going to put gel polish over um, and it's going to be really simple, fast. It might not turn out as great as when you get your nails done. You know, if you haven't been doing it for many, many years, but it's at least going to get you by and at least keep your nails from breaking and keeping them looking like from looking like garbage, frankly. Um, all you're going to need is a gel light, a gel base coat, gel top coat, and a gel color. Um, and you also need a primer. Do not forget a primer of some sort or um, I use Young Nails Protein Bond, which I love, and it works with like every product line, so it's pretty universal. You can even use it with nail polish. So, um, we're going to do that. I'm also going to show you how to do some easy spring nail art with stuff you have around the house. Uh, it's abstract looking, so if you suck at art, you're totally going to be able to nail it and at least have some cute spring nails. So. Let's get started. All right, so we've got these beautiful quarantine nails all grown out. These are actually my quarantine nail set. So I picked something new that wouldn't look too shitty once they grew out. But now they're grown out and it's time to redo them. And we're going to do this the easy way and we're not going to make it complicated. Um, so any of you nail techs, this is great. Uh, if you're doing it yourself at home right now, then this is a lot easier for you. And you won't screw up and your nails won't fall off. So what you're gonna do is you're going to first shorten your nails to the length that you would like. Um, I always use uh, toenail clippers, the straight edged ones. To cut it down if you sit here and try and file them especially if they're really grown out you are going to be filing forever so just use your little clippers and clip them down into shape i always do mine in a pointed shape because as you can tell when they grow out they get super wore down and end up being almond or even almost round so i always start off pointed just to make sure that they're not super dull by the time I switch out my nails. So I'm just going to cut them down to the length that I want. Right now I want them pretty short because it's faster and no one's staring at my nails but me. Well, and I guess you guys. So now we've got them all clipped. Next, you want to remove the product on top, but this is what's gonna save you a lot of time, is you're just gonna remove enough product that you're getting all the spots that may be lifted or aren't attached to the nail, and you're smoothing it and making it even, and also you're making it flush with the nail. So I don't know if you can see this, but as your nails grow out, see if I can get the camera to focus, there we go. You kind of get this nice ledge going on. So you just want to make sure that that is smooth because if that ledge is still there, you are going to see it once you polish over it. So just make sure to get that smooth. So you're going to start filing with your file. I know it's a little difficult to shop right now, but use a good file. I cannot tell you this enough. At least 150 grit or maybe 100 grit. Um, 100 grit is a little tougher and so it's kind of, I feel like, more difficult to file with. So I love 150 or 120. 180 is starting to get pretty light where it's going to take you a lot longer. Um, but if that's all you've got, then that's all you got. So you're going to turn your hand face you and I just like to go down, just straight down, 
and you'll start to feel that hump that is there and you can really dig into it from here and then I'll switch my nail file I'll go around this is going to give it a nice round smooth shape make sure you don't have any lumps when I'm filing this direction, it's gonna make sure that I have a nice curve to the side instead of it being, you know, all grown out and, and skiwampus, which this is how this nail likes to grow out. So now it looks pretty smooth, pretty even. And then I just go through over the top. I'm gonna to turn it this way. So I'm going over the top this way, all the way around. And you want to do longer strokes. If you're doing all these short, tiny taps, it's going to take you forever to file your nails. So make sure that you're doing short, little strokes. Um, and as you can see, I had a nice dark green on here from St. Patrick's Day. So this is the other trick that's going to get you to be a lot faster at, at doing this is if it's not lifting, you don't have to take it off. Just make sure that it's smooth and not bumpy. Um, obviously be mindful if you're gonna do a sheer color over the top of the green, you're gonna see the green. So you do have to take it all the way off. But if you're gonna do something that isn't see-through, then you can totally leave the green. And I'm gonna be doing kind of a nudie pink, which is on this hand, if you can see. And it covers the green pretty dang well. So, so you're going to continue on doing all the fingers. Okay, so for thumbs, you obviously can't file this way. <laughs> you file this way. And they're a little tricky. So I usually just file side to side for the most part. I'll check it, make sure it's even. A uh, habit, a bad habit I should say, is to check with your finger to kind of go like this to see if, oh, you know, I have a, a high part here, a low part here. Whatever you do, refrain from using your finger. You don't wanna get any of your oils onto the nail that you are trying to get nail product to stick to so okay so now you can see my beautiful nails with all my lovely green so i've gotten rid of all my lifting they're looking really quite marvelous so now you got rid of all the lifting that part is prepped so now you need to prep your regrowth part so that part where you know you've got your new growth and then your artificial nail starts or your gel polish nail is wherever that is. And just to let you know on my nails is only gel polish. So they're just layers of gel polish. So what you wanna do is you want to file in here. But when I say file, I want you to think more like buff or tickle. You're not removing your natural nail at all. All you're doing is roughing up the top of the surface so the product you put on will stick. And all you need to make sure is it's evenly roughed up. It doesn't need to be roughed to death. So you can, you know, turn your hand and you can go back this way. And as you're going back this way, you'll be able to push your cuticles back as well. Kind of get in there and file them. That works really great. And you'll be able to see if you have any little ledges that you need to even out. If anything's looking funky. Um, you can also go sideways, but you got, have got to be very careful that you're not angled too much and digging into your nail with the file. You wanna keep it as flat as possible. I kind of like this way if you're just doing it yourself. It's also a lot gentler because it's easy to file the top of your cuticle when you're going in this direction around. You got to be a lot more careful. Thumbs are a little trickier 
obviously because of their direction. So I usually go side to side and then I'll make sure that I get these corners really good. You can take your file and kind of go over the top of them lightly and you'll be able to feel if you have any ledges left that you need to even out and smooth. But they all feel good. They're all buffed, ready to go. You'll dust them off. I'm going to use some swipe to cleanse the nail plate, but you can totally use um, rubbing alcohol. All right. So you want to scrub the nail plate. You're getting any additional oils off, making sure that you have a really strong bond. Scrub, scrub, scrub. They'll start to dry out. You need to make sure you remember this step. You need to prime in some way. Um, this is your insurance. This is what's going to make the nail or the gel polish stick to your nail. If it's not there, it's just going to peel off. So you must, must, must do this. So I'm using, of course, Young Nails Protein Bond, and I love this stuff. You can use it for basically everything. Acrylic, gel polish, gel polish. But I'm going to go through and I'm going to get... Oh, got some dust still. And I'm going to go and get that area where your new growth is. And then I'm just going to go over the whole nail, getting all my really old gel polish. She looks really, really beautiful right now. You're gonna kind of let it dry for a sec. Usually when you're doing all 10 fingers, by the time you're done, it's good. But I'll double check and I'll look and I'll make sure that every part is covered. So it should look kind of shiny. It should not look dusty and dry anymore. Protein Bond is like your double-sided sticky tape. So just remember it's supposed to look sticky. Sticky, sticky. So I'm gonna give that a few seconds longer. I'm gonna double check on my nails. All right, they're looking good. So now we're ready to apply our product. So first you're gonna need a base of some sort, a gel polish base. I'm using Manicube Base. Um, I use all kinds of bases. So you're going to base the entire nail. Normally, you just need to base the natural nail, but it's a little difficult to just do only that part on your nails, especially if you're like me and you have little tiny nails. So you're just gonna brush that on from cuticle to free edge, right over your old product. Another reason that I love to leave the old product on is that extra layer of strength. Instead of filing it all down and it being really thin, I've got a few extra layers of base and color in there. And as long as I'm using Young Nails colors, I never have a problem with it lifting or any problems or issues layering over the top. Although I still do it with colors that aren't Young Nails, even though I don't have very many of those. So my base is all on. I'm shiny. I'm sticky. I'm going to stick my nails in my beautiful light for 60 seconds. All right. So we're all cured. Move that out of the way. So now you're going to apply your color. And you're going to apply it kind of thinner, you know, don't blob it on at all. Be careful not to get it all in the cuticle either. Not all gel polishes are created equally. Some polish on really easily and some will run and you have to hurry. If you find yourself with some gel polish that runs and starts to pull into your cuticles, all you need to do is do three nails at a time. Three nails, put it in the light, cure it for about five seconds, just to freeze it in place. Then do your other, you know, two nails, not three. 
and then you can cure the entire hand at the same time. Let me clean up any parts that are running. Clean it up. All right. Oh, we're ready to go back in the light. And once you've had it in the light for the approved time, it's usually 30 or 60 seconds, you'll take it out. You're going to add another coat if necessary. Some polishes are just one coaters, or at least you could get away with one coat, or if maybe it's like a glittery polish, you don't want it that glittery, so you only want one coat. Mine actually look pretty dang good for having some green under them. So I am gonna put another coat just because I can see a little green shadow in some of these nails. And go ahead and cure again. Okay, so now we got them out of the light. So at this point, you can put your top coat on and cure. And then, you know, you're just going to wipe the sticky layer off of your top coat with some alcohol if you don't have like a nail specific type of residue remover. Um, but instead, I'm going to show you a little art trick that you can do at home. Super awesome for spring, really easy, and you probably have all the things to do it. So you need alcohol in like a little condi conditioner, in a little container or dish. And you're going to need a brush, like a paintbrush that you might have, or you can just use, um, one of the brushes from your gels that you have, just take it out, get all the polish off of it onto the bottle, and then you can use your alcohol and your cotton to really wash the bristles and get them all clean. And then you end up with a brush like this where you can just use it for this technique. And then you can just put the brush back into your bottle um, and keep using it that way. So what you're going to do is you need to take off the dispersion layer like before. So you're going to get all the sticky off just like you would if it was a top coat because we don't need it to be sticky. Otherwise, it's not going to work. And you'll see it'll start to kind of look a little bit more matte and that's OK. So now you're going to take some Sharpies of your choice and we're going to do some alcohol inks. So you're going to undo your lid, maybe. All right, we got our colors ready to go. So now all you're going to do is I'm just going to do, maybe I'll do the, the three fingers. So I'll show you with my thumb first. So you're going to just kind of draw random splotches or lines or whatever you feel on your nail looks really great right now you'll dip your brush in your little alcohol mixture and then you're going to dab the alcohol on and you want your brush to be kind of wet you're not going to let it be um you're not going to dry it in the alcohol mixture and you'll see it starts to spread. You can spread it all the way to the edges. Now, if you go back and add more of a color, well, I'll show you what that looks like. Um, so say I want more, you know, pink or something over here. So you're adding more pink. You're getting more of your alcohol, getting that pink wet. And you'll see it starts to kind of spread into the other spots. So it'll start to remove some of the other color. When you do that. And normally I don't get it all over my finger, but I surely did this time. So we'll let that sit. Then I'm going to do these two fingers. 
really quick. And I definitely want a lot of pink. So fun. It's kind of like Easter eggs. <laughs> On to the next now. Put some dark blue in here. A little green. Um, also, if you end up getting it too wet, you will notice, you'll notice like this one, it's pretty see-through and transparent because I got it really, really wet. So if that happens and that's not the look that you're going for, you want it to be a little darker, then you'll just have to go back and add on more of those, those colors that you want more to show and kind of just let it let it do its thing now you have some very cute festive nails so i'm gonna let these dry first before i add my top coat all right it's dry it's top coat time as you can see i've done both hands um, I also wanted you to see what it looks like when one hand is a little darker and one hand is a lot lighter. You're using a lot more alcohol. So it just depends on what look you want, but it's the same exact color. It's just a completely different look. All right, time to top coat. So I am using Young Nails Caption Conversion Top Coat. I absolutely love this top coat because it works over everything. And it's really great at keeping things bonded to the nail. So if I'm doing art or even glitter, I'm always using my caption conversion top coat gel top coat so i'm going to actually just top coat both hands because my other hand was already ready to go normally i do one hand at a time um, but i had actually painted these like a week ago one hand <laughs> so i finally top coat these all right, now we send it in the light for 60 seconds to cure. I'm gonna put both my hands in the light. I love my Young Nails light because I can fit both hands. My clients can fit both hands. It's just really nice. All right, and don't forget to remove that sticky layer. And you should be able to get off any um, permanent marker that you had gotten on your skin and as a finishing touch I always go back and will file the sides a little especially when you do your own nails it's easy to get too much product on and for it to kind of seep into the cracks so I'll always go through and touch up the edges and the corners 